The top stories tonight in Y News. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. underscores the importance of appointing good managers of the proposed Maharlika Investment Fund. Suspended Congressman Arnolfo Tevez Jr. asked the Department of Justice and Prosecution panel to inhibit from the investigation into the killing of former Negros Oriental Governor Roel de Gamo. Senate Minority Leader Aquilino Coco Pimentel condemns what he calls tampering of the controversial Maharlika investment bill. And President Vladimir Zelensky admits that Ukraine's counter-offensive against Moscow's forces had been slower than desired following Russian President Vladimir Putin's announcement of deploying nuclear-capable ballistic missiles. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Thursday, the 22nd of June, 2023. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News & Rescue social media channels. I am William Theo. First in the news, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has allayed lingering concerns over the proposed Maharlika Investment Fund, saying it will be independent from government and will be managed by financial experts. Nel Maribohok reports. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. underscored the importance of appointing good managers of the Maharlika Investment Fund or MIF as the secret to the sovereign fund's success. President Marcos recognized that there have been cases of unsuccessful investment funds and pointed out that management is crucial to any fund's success. Yan ang susi dyan. Kung talaga, kung mahinang, kung korap ang ilagay mo dyan, korap talaga yan. Mana, mamawala yung pera. Kung mahusay ang nilalagay mo dyan, ay mag lalaki at lalaki yan at magagamit natin yung pondong yan. PBBM said he would immediately sign into law the said measure as soon as he get it. I will sign it as soon as I get it. Uh, am I happy? Well, that is the version that the, the uh, House and the uh, Senate has passed. And we will certainly look into uh, all of the changes that have been made. And I think most of the changes that were, that were proposed and that were eventually adopted really had to do um, with the safety and uh, uh, the, the security of uh, people's pension funds. On Wednesday, Senate President Juan Miguel Subiri signed the MIF bill. The measure would then be forwarded to House Speaker Martin Romualdez before transmitting it to Malacanang for the President's final approval. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Suspended Negros Oriental 3rd District Representative Arnolfo Tevez Jr. has asked the Department of Justice and Prosecution panel to inhibit from handling the criminal complaints filed against him over the killing of Governor Roel de Gamo. Dante Amento has the story. Suspended Negros Oriental 3rd District Representative Arnolfo Tevez Jr. through his lawyers filed an urgent motion before the Department of Justice or DOJ this morning. Tevez Jr. asked the DOJ and the panel of prosecutors to inhibit from handling the preliminary investigation of the murder complaints against him over the death of Governor Ruel Digamo and some civilians. He urged the DOJ to transfer the complaints and the conduct of the preliminary proceedings to the office of the Ombudsman. Hinihiling po natin na mag-inhibit ang buong uh, departamento sa pagdinig ng kaso ni uh, Congressman Tevez dito sa murder case. Sapagkat uh, para sa amin ay pronounced na na siya ay guilty ng kalihim ng uh, kagawaran ng katarungan. Tevez's camp argued the DOJ is biased. Even Justice Secretary Crispin Rimunia himself allegedly prejudged the case based on his several pronouncements, such as when Rimulia said that Tevez is the mastermind of the crime. What concerns us are the, pro, uh, are the pronouncements of the DOJ practically since day one na involved na si Congressman Tevez. 
yun ang nakaka-concern dyan. The case has already been prejudged for whatever reason we do not know because usually, bago naman magpahayag ang uh, kalihim ng uh, uh, DOJ, ay eh, matagal. Tinitignan muna. Meanwhile, the DOJ responded they are not the judge to decide on the case. Their duty being in the executive is to handle the preliminary investigation of the complaint. The Department of Justice is not a judicial or quasi-judicial um, body that performs judicial or quasi-judicial functions. The Department of Justice is under the executive branch, which performs executive functions. So we must afford the panel of prosecutors a free hand to handle the case under preliminary investigation. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. High-profile inmate Jad Dera and six National Bureau of Investigation or NBI security officers have undergone inquest proceedings this afternoon at the Department of Justice. This is over the complaints filed against them after they were arrested last night. Dera, a co-accused of former Senator Laila de Lima, allegedly went in and out of the NBI detention facility, but his lawyer denied the said allegation. Uh, bali, uh, masama yung pakaramdam niya. So, kailangan niya lumabas. Nagpaalam siya sa mga NBI personnel. So, pinagbigyan naman po siya. On the next hearing, the respondents are expected to submit their counter-affidavits. Most Filipinos believe that the country is headed in the right direction according to the Publicus Asia survey. Meanwhile, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and Vice President Sara Duterte maintain high approval ratings in the second quarter of the year. Janice Ingente will tell us why. Nearly 7 out of 10 Filipinos remain positive that the current state of the country, national and household economic outlook, will further improve under Marcos' administration as the country gets into the third quarter. In the second quarter, Pahayag 2023 survey conducted by Publicos Asia Incorporated, it revealed that 68% of Filipinos believe that the country is in the right direction. The survey is composed of 1,500 respondents. Lumalabas sa datos ang um, sustained uh, perception nila o kanilang uh, pananaw o pagtingin ay uh, uh, dito sa state of the country, sa current direction of the country, napaka-positibo ng kanilang pagtingin at kanilang kumbaga eh, hope. Uh, somehow, yes, uh, kumbaga eh, may pag-asa ang Pilipinas. Lalo na sa hinaharap nito. Yun ang pagtingin ng mga Pilipino. But despite the positive outlook, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and Vice President Sara Duterte trust rating declined from 2 to 3 percent for the second quarter of the year. PBBM got 54 percent trust rating, lower than 57 percent in the previous quarter of the year, while VP Sara got 61 percent in the second quarter, a 2 percent lower than 63 percent in the past three months. The respondents believe that the economy is the most pressing issue for PBBM to address slightly above corruption, inflation, poverty, and jobs. Sa mga bagong graduates naman at yung mga siyempre hindi ganun kataas ang kanilang mga sweldo, sila ay medyo hirap sa pagkuha ng trabaho. Ito ang lumalabas sa ating datos. At uh, medyo nahihirapan ng ating mga kababayan, lalo-lalo na sa datos na lumalabas ng quarter two na ang pagkalap o ang pagkakaroon ng pondo para sa kanika nila mga pamilya ay medyo mahirap makamtan. But despite of a decline trust ratings, two top officials kept its high approval rating for the second quarter. PBBM registered 62% approval rating, slightly higher than 60% from the previous quarter, while VP Sara maintained an approval rating at 67%. PBBM meanwhile expresses gladness over a survey result showing increased approval rating about how he steers the country. But of course, uh, still at the very heart of it, I have to thank all uh, those who have continued to support not only myself, but uh, all of the 
the th different things that we have been trying to do to make life better for all Filipinos, to find ways to bring us into the forefront of the global economy. Para naman, kilala na ang Pilipinas na magandang magtrabaho dito, maganda mag-invest dito, magandang magnegosyo, magandang kausap ang gobyerno, magandang kausap ang mga private sector. Janice and Hente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And for news abroad, as the highly anticipated Mount Fuji climbing season draws near, concerns arise over the risky practice of bullet climbing or ascending to the peak without overnight rest. Local authorities issue warnings, emphasizing the dangers of this approach as climbers scramble to secure limited accommodations. Nerisa Dando will tell us why live. Good evening, Nerisa. Good evening, LC. Mount Fuji climbing season is approaching and local governments are warning against a dangerous practice known as bullet climbing. The 2023 climbing season is scheduled from July 1 to September 10. It's the first since COVID-related restrictions were lifted and most mountain huts along the route to the summit are already fully booked. Due to limited accommodation availability, there is concern that climbers without reservations may attempt to continue their ascent in the middle of the night, putting themselves in danger. This year marks the 10th anniversary of Mount Fuji's World Heritage Site registration, attracting visitors from both Japan and abroad who hope to witness the sunrise from the summit. Typically, climbers time their ascent to reach the summit at sunrise, resting at a hut for a few hours before continuing. Bully climbing can complete the climb in a shorter time but increases the risk of altitude sickness, sleeping, and hypothermia, especially for those lingering here to pick. To address these concerns, Yamanashi Prefecture has decided to shorten the nighttime hours of the Fuji Subaru Line Tall Road, which connects the, the fifth station of the Yoshida entrance to the foot of the mountain during the climbing season. Local governments in Yamanashi have also requested limitations on the number of climbers, although the prefectural government is unlikely to accept such restrictions. Usamu Nakamura, head of a group representing mountain hut owners, expressed happiness at the interest in climbing but emphasized the potential for catastrophic accidents. He urged climbers to have fun responsibly and encourage careful preparation. Back to you, Elsie. Thank you, Nerisa Dando, reporting live from Japan. President, President Volodymyr Zelensky says Ukraine war is not a Hollywood movie in response to Russian President Vladimir Putin's announcement that nuclear-capable ballistic missiles will be deployed soon. Jane Robles details why. 484 days have passed since Russia invaded Ukraine. In the two-day Ukraine recovery conference, which concluded today, June 22, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky admitted that Ukraine's counteroffensive may be progressing slower than desired. Zelensky also insisted that he will not risk the lives of the country's troops solely to meet international expectations, emphasizing that the situation should not be viewed as a movie. These remarks came after Russian leader Vladimir Putin claimed that there was lower intensity in Kyiv's long-anticipated counter-offensive. Additionally, Putin revealed that new Sarmat intercontinental ballistic missiles would soon enter service, highlighting Russia's nuclear capabilities. The warheads are designed to carry out strikes on targets thousands of miles away. Russia is continuing its efforts to build defensive lines to maintain its positions, especially in the Crimean Peninsula. Meanwhile, the European Union has agreed on an 11th package of sanctions against Russia, which will restrict the sale of sensitive dual-use goods and technology to third countries that might offer them to Russia. Jane Robles, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. We'll share more global stories with you later, but for now, back to you, William. Thank you, Elsie. For those watching our live streaming on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen 
and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. The Department of Agriculture is part of the food stamp project of the DSWD. It will utilize the Kadiwa on wheels that will be placed in areas that will be identified. Ray Pelayo details why. The Department of Agriculture is now coordinating with different farmers cooperatives. Agriculture Spokesperson Assistant Secretary Christine Evangelista said that farmers produce will be supplied in Kadiwa on wheels. We are looking at uh, one Kadiwa on wheels in every area dahil ito naman po ay mobile, no? So we can set up in a barangay and move on to the next. Uh, we will follow the lead of DSWD. Department of Social Welfare and Development or DSWD's food stamp program targets about a million beneficiaries in three years. Households with below 8,000 pesos monthly income is one of the requirements. Monthly, they will be given 3,000 pesos worth of food stamp. Part of the value can be bought with agricultural products. Meron po silang ibinigay sa amin na tinatawag na food basket. At ito po yung mga dadalhin na mga gulay, uh, bigas, uh, meron din po itong mga manok. Yun po ang dadalhin ng ating mga cooperative. Uh, we were just waiting for the exact number of beneficiaries in every area so that we can prepare accordingly. Federation of Free Farmers, Chairman Leonardo Montemayor, said that this project will benefit farmers. So, ang advantage kasi kung ma-organize na mabuti ito ay magkakaroon po ng kumbaga sure market sa mga produkto po ng mga magsaka natin, whether gulay po ito, bigas, at iba pa. DSWD plans to launch the program next month. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The Department of Migrant Workers, or DMW, ensures that the transition. Starting on July 1st, the DMW will manage the ATN Services, which is a program that caters to the needs of our overseas Filipino workers, or OFWs. These services include legal assistance, repatriation, labor-related services, welfare assistance, shelter, and emergency crisis response for our OFWs. However, the DMW will need additional funding for the salaries of additional employees and funds for its operations. Currently, there are 273 migrant worker office personnel around the world. The DMW plans to recruit 94 more employees for ATN and by the end of the year, 98 more employee slots will be filled. According to the DMW's report, the Action Fund or Agarang Kalinga at Saklolo para sa mga OFW na nangangailangan is currently at 1.082 billion pesos. Yes, it requires more funding. Uh, that's why it's a 2024 budget. We hope to have uh, more. We're praying very hard. We really made sure, no, directive to ni Secretary Toots and even Secretary Manalo, na dapat smooth and seamless ang transition uh, in a sense that hindi maapektuhan yung patuloy, walang patid na delivery of services on the ground. That's key. Uh, and, and we know the DFA, our, our colleagues at DFA uh, have done their job no? dito sa ATN OFW services. We, so we want to make sure na pag pinasa yung paton ay tuloy-tuloy pa rin ang takbo. And, and that's exactly what we've been doing. In other news, some education advocacy groups disapprove the suspension of mother tongue-based multilingual education or MTBMLE in the country. This comes after concerns were raised about the lack of learning materials and insufficient preparation of the teachers. Bernadette Tinoy will tell us why. Assessment Curriculum and Technology Research Center, or ACTRC, recommends not suspending the Mother Tongue-Based Multilingual Education, or MBTMLE, until the Department of Education, or DepEd, addresses its problems, such as the lack of learning materials written in different languages. 
JEPED announced the implementation status of MDT MLE, covering 19 official languages out of 245 languages, faces challenges such as insufficient teacher preparation and a low level of learners' interest and motivation. Dr. Ramlin Metila, a senior research fellow at ACTRC, said that some schools have implemented MBT MLE even if they were not part of the 19 official languages. Marami ring mga eskwelahan ang nagpapatupad ng MTB MLE na hindi gamit yung 19 na official na wika. Nang in-evaluate po namin ang mga paaralan gamit ang iba pang aspeto tulad ng teacher training tapos materials aba lumalabas na may ilang ang mga eskwelahan na bagamat hindi sila four out of four siguro or perfect doon sa language aspect kung saan nandun ang minima, may ituturing pa rin namin silang best practice school. Former Komisyon ng Wikang Filipino or KWF Chair Ricardo Nolasco also disagrees with the possible suspension as it may slow down the literacy development of elementary students. Removal of the L1 subject will give the wrong signal to the public and it will wipe up all our literacy gains and promote the dangerous idea that focusing on English will save this country from the current education crisis. Meanwhile, Senator Sherwin Gachalian revealed the options under consideration, which include the removal of mother tongue as a medium of instruction or giving the Department of Education time to improve the implementation. Bernadette Tinoy, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Investments in India will soon be made by the automotive and energy company Tesla, Elon Musk, the chief executive, announced. Paul Gachalian will give us the details why, live. Good evening, Paul. Good evening, Elsie. The chief executive officer of Tesla, Elon Musk, met with India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi after he arrived in New York alongside 19 other business leaders on Tuesday. Elon Musk announced that India is encouraging Tesla to conduct major investments in the nation, to which they agreed to, but are looking for the right timing and will do so as soon as they can. Prime Minister Modi had invited to meet him to open up the discussion to search for an opportunity to begin business investments in the country. According to the Ministry of External Affairs spokesperson Arendam Bagchi, the reduction of import tariffs for electrical vehicles to be exported to India has been asked for by Tesla. At the same time, the nation is looking forward to the company to begin producing in the nation. Meanwhile, another automobile manufacturer has been present and dominates the market in India, acquiring over 80% of electronic vehicle market shares. Back to you, Elsie. Thank you, Paul Gachalian, reporting live from New Zealand. An explosion caused by a suspected gas leak rocked central Paris overnight, injuring at least 37 people, with four in a serious condition and two feared to be missing. The incident took place around 4.55 p.m. local time at the Paris American Academy on Rue Saint-Jacques in the fifth arrondissement of the French capital, official says. Paris prosecutor Laura BQ said CCTV footage suggests the blast occurred within the apartment building, which was next to the Val de Grace church. While Paris Police Chief Laurent Nunez reported that the building was initially engulfed in b before its facade completely collapsed. Firefighters managed to bring the fire un under control with some 70 fire trucks and 270 crew at the scene. The location of further victims still left under the rubble had been identified by rescue teams using sniffer dogs. Similarly, in January 2019, a gas leak was behind an explosion in the 9th arrondissement that resulted in the deaths of four people, with 66 injured. Investigators are now looking into whether an individual had acted without due care or if the building conditions were in breach of regulations. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Elsie Marcos, live from Auckland, New Zealand. Good evening. 
Senate Minority Leader Aquilino Coco Pimentel has once again voiced his opposition on what he calls tampering of the controversial Maharlika Investment Bill or MIF Bill. This comes a day after Senate President Juan Miguel Mig Zubiri signed the final copy of the proposed Maharlika Fund. The Senate leader noted that the corrections concerning the conflicting provisions on the prescription period of crimes and offenses were thoroughly discussed by the majority bloc in the group chat. Pimentel says the enrolled bill to be sent to President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. is not the version that was properly approved by Congress and it was amended without plenary authority. The lawmaker maintains the revisions violate the Senate rules and Constitution. However, Senate President Pro Tempore Loren Legarda believes no violation was made in passing the MIF bill. It might have been part of a whole process, but not the only process. I'm not privy to all the conversations because it's uh, the task of the sponsor of the committee. I was witness to some conversations on Viber, but to be fair to everyone concerned, those were not the only conversations. Of course, there must have been face-to-face -face meetings. The Professional Regulation Commission will coordinate with other agencies to discuss Health Secretary Ted Herbosa's plan of granting temporary licenses to nursing graduates who failed to pass the board exam. Gladys Toabi will tell us why. The Professional Regulation Commission, or PRC, says that they did not have the power to grant temporary licenses to nursing graduates. However, the agency is open to the idea of allowing non-board passers to work under the supervision of health professionals. Doon po sa RA 9173, wala hong provision na nagbibigay ng uh, kapangyarihan, a PRC, o any government agency na magbigay ng temporary license sa mga nursing graduates na hindi pa o nakapasa. As for Quezon City General Hospital, they are willing to provide training for these nursing graduates to address the lack of manpower in their hospital. Although it's a temporary solution, but this will greatly help, especially the government hospitals, kung saan alam mo naman na pakaraming pasyente. QCJH being a training hospital, ako I would agree na kaya namin gawin yan. Uh, we will be willing to train all of these nurses. Anyway, sabi ko nga ganun, kung sila naman ay makaka-fill up ng aming uh, gap sa manpower, why not, di ba? Uh, bigyan lang siguro natin sila ng uh, time at saka leeway on how they can adapt, lalo na alam mo naman sa government, di ba? Minsan, ang isang nurse ay eh, nasa 50 ang pasyente, so baka din makukulture siya. So with proper training and guidance, pwede naman. Meanwhile, the Philippine Nurses Association aims to provide opportunities to nurses, especially those who have recently passed the nurse licensure examination but have not yet found employment in hospitals. We really need to have muna careful study on this. So kung, kung wala tayong magiging reference or basis, ang, ang, ang risk dito is if ever uh, this will be implemented, how they will be protected by PRC. The Private Hospital Association of the Philippines Incorporated wants to know who will be held accountable if these nurses with temporary licenses encounter any problems. Well, ang kanya namang proposal is ano, for government hospitals lang. So, actually, hindi kami cover dyan. But then, halimbawa, sabihin sa mga private hospitals na uh, gawin yun, mukhang uh, magkakaroon ng problem. Yung problem ng responsibility. Kung halimbawa, magkaroon ng problema because of uh, uh, this unlicensed nurse, sino po uh, magte-take ng risk or ng responsibility? The Department of Health through Health Secretary Herbosa assures the provision of quality services to hospitals in line with the proposal of granting temporary licenses to non-board passers. He added that these nurses will still have liabilities. Gladys Tuabi, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God.
Our Kasang Bahay, as the world faces these trying times amid the various challenges and uncertainties, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity from Monday to Friday, 9.30 p.m. Philippine time through the social media accounts of members Church of God International. And before we close, we will leave you with a word, giving glory to God from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 14. It says, Do all things without murmurings and disputings. And those are the reasons behind the news, June 22, 2023, reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.